additional fruits. We shoot, uh, in addition to herbarium specimens that are 11 by 17, we shoot long palms. That's another thing we can't shoot in the photo box. We have to shoot on the copy stand. So to be able to accommodate uh, items that have that, that size, uh, we need to do too. So I think one-on-one -on -one talking would be great. So please, if anyone wants to find out some more resources and we can search for a camera that meets your needs. Let me go Moses and then Francis. Okay, my, my question is directed to the management of your camera and related to the temperature of the area they are working. Mm. For example, what, what we have realized in Corrup over the years mm -hmm. is that because of high humidity, mm -hmm. about three, three workers, three um, researchers have like uh, experienced a breakage in their camera yeah. due to high humidity. Uh -huh. So in that case, I mean, what, what can we do to what could you do when things like that well you can try and just like you take care of your herbarium specimens and when you when you can try and keep them in a controlled humidity controlled temperature environment mm -hmm. i recommend the same for your camera equipment if you can have a room even if it's a very small room that's humidity controlled mm -hmm. try and do that i know that's difficult to do otherwise um, i don't know High humidity in cameras. You c I don't know if putting your camera in some desiccant periodically. Okay. It's a possibility. But yeah. So we saw in, um, in Trinidad, for example, um, at a small research station, there were some frog people, oh, fish people mostly, really, you know, people working on vertebrates. They had a lot of really high tech equipment with them. And there was a small drying chamber, essentially just you know drying cabinet, as you know some some people would use for preparing specimens and everything. And this is where they shoved all their camera equipment into. So that's you know if there's any option, and I think they're not terribly expensive necessarily. So that's an option. And yeah, I think with my own cameras, I've noticed that taking them to tropical places too much is you know, seems to be a, a problem. But then I don't carry high, you know, I don't carry very valuable cameras with me in the field. I have little cameras and, you know, after a few years they need to be replaced. But in field situations, we take pelican cases, mm. which seal quite absolutely, and we load them with desiccant. So we do that for video recorders, um, audio recorders, cameras. So maybe a very easy solution is some very well sealed chamber, like a pelican case, and load it with desiccant. They, and you have to renew the desiccant at, a, at regular intervals. So maybe that, yeah, that's a consideration. We try to not move the camera from the copy stand um, with any regularity because we don't like to have to recenter the camera over the where we have our specimen. But I think in your case, it's it's a better investment to to use that time. Uh, and preserve your camera. Mm -hmm. So not worry about having the camera be positioned perfectly, but put the camera in a case, um, maybe nightly. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. I wanted to know more about um, the position of the camera. Does it affect the full frame? Uh, size of the picture, you know, yes. orientation of the camera, does it have any effect? It does, that? yes. So the, the camera sensor is longer on one side than the other. Yes. Um, yes. However you orient your camera, it doesn't matter. So in fact, on our imaging stations, if you were to look at the specimen, we're actually capturing the specimen um, in the same rectangular direction as the sensor is oriented. Do you follow? Let me show you what I mean.
So the camera sensor is rectangular. Where is my mouse? See that? It's rectangular, longer on this side than it is on this side. So is an herbarium sheet rectangular. So if we were to put an herbarium sheet like this, we would have the long edge and the short edge parallel to the sensor. So we capture all of the sheet and as little of the border around the sheet as possible so we don't have to crop. It's perfectly fit. Nice picture. I have a general question relating to care and maintenance of imaging equipment. Yes. So if you can make some general statements about this. Do, can I make general statements about care of imaging equipment? Well, humidity and temperature definitely plays a part. Um, like with any electronics, you don't want them to get too hot. You don't want them to get wet. Um, we at New York have the luxury of not having too many extremes in either area and those uh, and humidity and temperature controlled buildings. Um, how, how do you do it? What do you do? So do you, for example, have a routine maintenance schedule um, and what needs to be kept in a special place like the lenses, how do we handle the lenses and so on and so forth? Ah, that's a great question. I didn't really talk at all about uh, putting the pieces together and the care you take with the pieces. Um, I can demonstrate now with the camera. We don't, we check periodically our equipment only in so much that I confirm that it's still working and I confirm that it's working as well as I expect it to be. So the images are, the images are still being captured on the camera it's still able to focus. Sometimes you can have the autofocus capability of the lens stop functioning. Um, that the images look exactly as I expect them to. Um, the lights work as I expect them to. So I check that periodically because I would not want for a digitizer who doesn't know anything about imaging to come in and image 800 specimens that day, not realizing that all 800 of those specimens were not satisfactory. Um, so, how do you handle the camera equipment? With great, great care. This part can, this part here, if the tiniest bit of dust gets on there, it's extremely hard to get off. You have to have a special brush and air and to get it off. Um, and it'll mark every image that you take. So you want to try and limit this exposure to air, to dust, the time of exposure, this sensor to dust as possible. So you want to quickly put your lens on and uh, yeah, quickly put your lens on. So usually the lenses relative to the camera body have a little white spot and you match the little white spot or the little, right, or the little red spot together and then you twist the lens on. Just like the sensor, you want to avoid exposing this side of the lens to dirt, to air, to dust. On this side of the lens, you want to avoid scratches. You can protect it from scratches by buying a six or seven dollar UV light. This does nothing with focals, focus, but it's cheaper and it will protect my lens from being scratched and from getting dirty. Do you, am I covering what you're thinking? Um, we leave our camera stations where they are. We have locked rooms. Um, only people with electronic access 
are allowed into them. So that's another consideration. If you don't trust everyone in the space of your equipment, it might be worth it to lock it down, put it in a cabinet. So maybe if that is the case, you could put it in a cabinet and put it in a desiccant box. Um, I suggest if you're traveling with them that you get a good, good bag, a good padded bag for your camera and your camera body and carry them separately. Don't carry your camera in your bag like this unless you have a bag that supports the structure because you don't want torque on the camera body relative to the lens. Um, and never, <laughs> never check your camera <laughs> under the plane. <laughs> never. <laughs> you have the right when you board a plane to say this bag has photography equipment it's coming with me. Even if you have a big suitcase, they must find a place for it. You protest because they don't insure computers, camera equipment, anything of expense. And that's including on board with you. So it's your responsibility. I feel terrible for you. <laughs> yeah, I usually end up with a, a, a very small suitcase with clothes and a big backpack with my computer, my cameras, my hard drive, my lenses. So, how are we doing on time? 10 you got a short piece to do Short a piece? Or do you want to stop and We could go through it, I think. I think, uh, so the next bit is actually taking the pictures which um, it's probably about a half an hour. How many slides do I have here? No, oh, we could go through it, I think. Do you want to go through it or do you want to break? You tell me. Go through it? Okay. All right, so here's our imaging station. So just to reiterate again, this part is sold separately from this part and you can have this part completely independent of this. You can have light sources, be they standing, be they tabletop, emitting light onto your shooting surface. It doesn't have to be this light box. This is just what we use. So, so this and likewise this is what we use at New York. This is our full camera package. We have this camera which is 21 megapixel and it's full frame. Unfortunately, although this is a really, really good camera, Canon has stopped making it because they want to make more money. So they sell you a newer version. Um, so now there's available a Mark III, which is much more expensive than this. Either way, you want to buy your camera body separate because if you're shooting herbarium specimens and herbarium specimens only, you don't need a lens that's got an extreme uh, variation in focal length. You need this focal length so that your camera lens can be 29 inches off the, off the surface and you can capture the full specimen in the image and nothing else. Um, the nice thing about DSLR cameras is that the lenses are interchangeable so you can have one camera body and several different types of lenses and the lenses last a really, really, really long time if you take care of them. So you can consider them an investment and you can also purchase insurance on them though I don't know how easy that is to do here. <coughs> Um, and you don't have to buy the name brand lens either. There are some good lenses that are, are not name brands and then there are some lenses that are extremely, extremely expensive way, well beyond this. So try and read reviews, read what professional photographers have said about the lenses to find out what they think. Not everybody actually knows what they're talking about so you have to take it with a grain of salt. Out of the box, like I said, Canon comes with this software, which includes the remote shooting software and the, the image viewing software. And it comes out of the box with this USB cable camera to computer, but not a power supply. So you have to buy that separate. And that's the case for all the Canon, uh, the Canon cameras. Oh. Let me plug this back in. All right. So I turn on my camera. I turn on my computer, I turn on my lights, and I turn on my, I open my software, and I open EOS utility for a Canon. This is the same button as is this. 
on my camera. So when I press this, it activates this and it takes a picture. So I never have to touch this. So it's positioned above my specimen and I'm not touching it, knocking it out of focus because it's locked into that copy stand. So if I jiggle the copy stand a little, it's going to vibrate the image and it's going to capture a blurry specimen. This allows me to rotate the image so I can see it on the computer screen, upright or horizontally. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> okay, what settings do we want? We talked about ISO, we talked about shutter speed and aperture. All of those things you can adjust right here. So we want to make sure, like I said before, our camera is in manual focus, or manual, manual mode, which means I get to adjust all of these as I see fit. 1 over 60, or 1 60th one sixtieth of a second, is a good shutter speed to start with. I suggest you stick around that. An f-stop of 8 is a good one to start with, between f8 and f10. 